All right, so now we're going to look at web programming with uh, Golang. And you go to Todd McLeod, goes to 11 on GitHub and repos, and Golang Web Dev. And there it is. And I'll put this URL right in our notes. And uh, there's that. And you can also get all this code if everything's set up by going to this, uh, running this command. And that should bring it all down. And, um, and so then you'll have this new repo for Web Dev. So I'm going to open that up and go lang web dev and we're going to talk first about templates web templates so uh, this will be under you know git code and uh, and then templates forms into which we insert data okay and so a uh, basic template just for an example would be like this form letter Dear, whatever, and I just mail, I just merge this against all of my contacts, and it prints a letter for each of my contacts and sticks their first name in. Anybody have questions about that? Cool. All right. So uh, we we could do like some basic things, like where we just take a string file, and we you know create a variable which is a string, and then. Uh, we could also then, let me just simplify this a little bit, you know, like template, and I'm just gonna call it TPL colon equals, and I'm gonna create my template with a raw string literal, which is a back tick, okay? You see that? Instead of using double quotes, I've used a back tick. Do you guys remember the back tick raw string literal? We never went over that. So I could use double strings. I know I think, Matt, you asked this. Go lang playground. I could use either that, right? Or I could do this, back tick, back tick, and those both work. And But the difference is back tick will keep spaces, whereas this won't. That's going to blow up. Okay? So back tick is a raw string literal. And uh, this first chunk of code which we're looking at is uh, right here. And I'll just bring this over when we're done and make a URL for it. So here I've taken another string literal, and this is concatenation, that plus sign. So I'm concatenating, I'm concatenating the variable name into there, and now I'm just going to print that out. And so if I run this, and I'll bring this over to Golang Playground. Well, that sure hell looks a whole lot like web to me, right? There's an HTML page. So that's basic templating using a programming language. But how can we do things on a better level? Print a file, take arguments, those are all interesting. Parse and execute. So we could put all of our HTML into a file. This is a starting point, put our HTML into a file. But then we need to somehow tell our program Hey, there's this file. Go get it and get and use it, right? And luckily, there's an entire because Go is built to do Google stuff and Google stuff is web stuff. There's a net package, which is confusing beyond the point of me being able to understand it because I never took networking classes because I study economics and business. And here's HTTP. There's a net HTTP package. 
There's also a text template package. And on top of that, built on top of that, is an HTML, pa HTML template package. Okay? So we're going to start out looking at the text template package. There we are, text template. And part of that, bring in text template, this package from the standard library. And now inside template, there's a function called parse files. You give it the file name which is the name of this HTML, and I'm calling this Go HTML. It's just a file. If I want to confuse people, <laughs> that's kind of funny, right? That's, that could just con confuse people. Or maybe I do this. I just like them all. I'm going to turn this back to go HTML because that's kind of a standard. So now I have template parse files. It takes whatever got parsed and either gives me an error or sticks everything into this variable TPL. If there's an error, if the error is not nil, there is an error, my program stops. Log it. If there isn't an error, I'm now going to take this variable, TPL, which has a method attached to it, execute. I'm going to execute the standard out and not pass in any, any data. Let's see it run. Let's go look at text template. Well, let's, let's see these and then we'll understand that in more detail. Let's give you a tour. So that was, that was to standard out. Let's see what this one does. This one actually prints it to an index HTML file. So I open this up, parse it, right? I create from OS a new file and I defer the close of it because defer is something that executes anything that's deferred right before the containing function closes. So you could put your close with defer right next to where you open something. You wouldn't want to open a bunch of files and never close them. But this makes your code readable and it lets you easily check, oh yeah, I opened that file, created it, and I got to close it. But this won't run until the function containing it exits because you might need to use that, which we do right here. So we're going to execute our template and not pass in any data and send it to the new file. So we'll actually create index.html, create the file, kind of interesting. And then we have parse files, right, where again, template parse files, just parsing in multiple files, or instead of parsing in each file name, I could just point it towards a folder and parse in the whole folder. So all the file names in the folder get parsed in. That's pretty cool, right? And, uh, and then we have uh, use func init here to do all of our parsing just once when our program starts up. Go look in here and parse all the files that you find in there. I call it GMAO just because whatever, you could call it anything, the extension. So that's parsing files. And then we could also pass data in, right? So here, I'm instead of passing in nil, I'm passing in data and write it to standard out. So let's see that run 005. So I passed in 42 and there I printed it out. So I've taken data and merged it with my template. There's 42. What's my template look like? Like that. All right, just the current piece of data that was passed in is represented by the dot. If it had been a struct that I passed in, I might do to get the specific field that I needed. And if I passed in a struct which had a slice of int, 
right? And I wanted to do that, I would do range xi, and then I need to end that range, and then each time through the loop, the output of the range would become the new input of that, so it uses pipelining concept, and that would be each iteration in that slice of int, if that's what I passed in, right? But I'm just passing in one piece of data, it's a, an int, it's a number, it's 42. That gets passed into my template. My template prints it out right there. So template, parse files, parse the file, give me my TPL, execute it. So let's look at how that works. Text template, index. We have type template. We have parse files here. We have parse glob there. We also have parse files here and we have parse glob there. The difference is parse files here and parse glob are at the package level. These are attached to a type. Anything of type pointer to a template. That's a type. There it is. It's a template. Anything to pointer to a template is, uh, can call these methods. This is what it does. Parse files takes file names, an unlimited number of them, dot, 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 means variadic parameter, pass in as many strings as you want, separated by commas, zero or more, right? And, uh, and it parses all those files, and it returns a pointer to a template and an error. I think of a type template as a container, a bucket, a suitcase, a big box, whatever you want to think of that, and as you parse all these files, HTML files, to be used in your web program, you need to be able to access them from some variable. And so that variable will be of type template. This is where all my templates are. Maybe if, you know, they should have called it templates, that would make it more easy to be like, oh, that's type templates. It's a variable that holds all my templates. They called it template, even though it can hold templates many of them. So that's just like a big old suitcase that your templates go into when you parse them all. And then you have one variable of type template that's holding all of your HTML templates. And it will return an error. This is a wrapper function from like the west side with like a dope lowrider and booming music. It's a wrapper function. And temp pointer to a template in error, pointer to a template in error, right? But this only kicks out a template. It's a wrapper. So I could use must, wrap it around me column parse files or parse glob. Both of them return a pointer to a template or an error. So if they are sitting right here in the middle, where a pointer to a template, they will return what this needs. And then this will either shut the program down if there's an error or give you back the pointer to a template. So you could avoid error checking and use this wrapper function which does the error checking for you. And that's what I did right here. Template must and then I wrapped that around template parse files because template parse files takes in zero or more strings. Template parse files returns a template or an error and that's what this needs Right? And then that returns a template. So template must, template parse files that, gives me a TPL. That TPL is declared up here at the package level. It is of type template from package template, and it's a pointer, meaning I'm not passing around these 100 HTML templates, which could be 400 lines long or more each. I'm not passing around all of that text through my program. I'm passing the memory address. Give me the memory address, that's it. So this is the memory address, this TPL, pointer to a template from package template, that's the type. I get this that variable here. I wanted this to be at the package level so I could access it here and here. Now that I do this on the initialization and startup of my program, funk init, I now execute my template. We go and we look at execute template. When I have a pointer to a template, I have all these methods attached to it. This is the receiver. These are the receivers. 
So anytime I have a type, anything, anytime I have a variable of type, template, pointer to a template, which is right here, I now have all these methods. I have execute and execute template. The difference between the two is execute will execute the very first template in my suitcase. That's what it executes. Execute template lets me specify the name of the template in my suitcase that I want to execute. And by suitcase, I mean, you know, that TPL variable. I mean, this, this templates type, right? Whatever's in there. It asks for a writer. Where do you want to write it to? This could be standard out. This could be a file. This could be an HTTP response. Polymorphism. I pass in the writer I want it to write to. That writer needs to implement uh, the right method in a certain way to have that polymorphism. I pass it in, whatever I want to write to, and I pass in any data. That's web programming with Go. Matt, it's good stuff. Matt's, Matt's mind blown. So let me, uh, let's just look at that. Step one, parse your files. Or alternatively, if I don't want to parse all of my files, I could do parse glob, like right up here. All right, just hey, parse this whole glob, everything in the folder that begins with anything and has that file extension. So everything in here, parse all that, put it in TPL. Step one, right? Step one, parse files. You could use template must. You don't have to do, do error checking then. Step two, hmm. Step three, profit. <laughs> Step two, execute your template. Something that implements the writer interface, like standard out. This template, I'm specifying, I could just do execute and not specify the template name. Execute just takes where do you want to write it to and what data do you want to pass in. Or I could say execute template and give it the name of the template that I want to execute. And then I pass in that data, executes. It's elegant. It's beautiful. Execute only execute the first one, or do they execute all of them starting from first? Execute will only execute the first one, no matter how many are in there. But it won't go to the next one. Won't go to the next one. Execute template, you get to specify which one. Well, that's sweet. So that's uh, that's executing templates and the text template package.